Hey guys, over the last couple of years, we've spent a lot of time talking about Docker and Docker setups and containers and home servers and that sort of thing. During that time, I have taken a look at a lot of Docker containers. And in this video, I thought we would take a look at what it is I actually host in my day-to-day -day life. Before we actually get into the different things that I host on my network, I thought it would make more sense to actually take a look at the hardware I'm using. And then once we've gone through the hardware, go back and take a look at the different uh, things that are being hosted on each of those different bits of hardware. But before we get into any of that, here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. I've been partnered with Linode for quite a while now because it's a great place to host just about anything you could want to host. Need a dedicated space to host an app? Linode has you covered with more than 100 pre-built apps that can be installed with just a couple of clicks. Want to develop an app on your favorite flavor of Linux? Linode has you covered there too with more than 30 different options to start with. Need to do some pen testing on your own network or app? Install a Kali Linux setup in just a few clicks to get started with testing your own security. You can also host a Docker setup, a Kubernetes cluster, and more with just a few clicks. From hosting a single website to complex multi-cloud deployments, find enterprise level capabilities like object storage, Kubernetes, and GPUs at a 30 to 50% lower cost than the major cloud providers. Be sure to check out the link in the video description to get $100 in free credit for 60 days to see what you can do with Linode. So the first device we're gonna take a look at here is my Synology DS1621XS Plus. The folks over at Synology sent this to me. Uh, this was kind of the first big device that was sent to me by a company, um, and I've absolutely loved it. It's got kind of got a, a sentimental place in my heart, so to speak, and uh, it's been a beast ever since I got it. It came with 16 gigs of RAM and an Intel Xeon D1527. I've since upgraded the RAM to 32 gigs, like you can see here. But because it's got that Xeon processor, that D1527, it doesn't have Intel Video Quick Sync, uh, which caused some issues when I tried to do things like install Plex or MB on it. It just didn't do well with streaming media. So I've actually got my, my media streaming set up on a different device that we'll take a look at here in a minute. Um, but like I said, I've upgraded it to 32 gigs of RAM. I've only have, ever had one issue with it, and that's when I first got it. One of the drives that I got was bad. I already made it, and it's been a beast ever since. And in fact, if we come over uh, to the storage manager here, we can see that it is uh, six bays, six three and a half inch bays rather, and two M.2 bays. Uh, I've got each of the six drives uh, populated with an eight terabyte drive and then a two terabyte NVMe uh, drive from Sabrent. And uh, the cache drive, that M.2 drive from Sabrent that I'm using as a cache drive really does make a difference uh, for media streaming and things like that because of the configuration that I'm currently using. And like I said, this has been a beast ever since I got it. Um, and I, I do host quite a bit of uh, Docker stuff on this that we will take a look at here in just a little bit. But I um, absolutely love this, except for the fact that the, that that Xeon processor doesn't have Intel Video Quick Sync on it. So there you go. So the other three NAS devices that I have on my network are all provided to me by TerraMaster. Uh, in fact, the one of them I haven't even reviewed on the channel yet, so there's not much to talk about there yet. But uh, I've always been a big Kevin Smith fan, so I've kind of used the uh, View Askew universe uh, as, as some of my naming uh, inspiration. Like the first device we're going to take a look at here uh, is an F2423, uh, again, a TerraMaster device that I've named J, and uh, I only use it for MB. That's it, that is, it's my media server, and that's all it does is it just serves MB Media. Um, it's overkill, it's unnecessary, but uh, I had it and I, I put it up as my media server and it's just, it's just been running and it's never caused me an issue, so I've never bothered changing it. So uh, so basically, like I said, it runs MB, and if we take a look at like the, uh, the file manager here, all of these like movies, documentaries, kids movies, music, uh, TV, stand-up, YouTube TV, whatever, those are all actually mapped over from my Synology device where all of my downloading and all of that kind of stuff happens in the background. Everything gets stored on that Synology device and then mapped over to here. Uh, and it's actually why I'm glad that I've got that, uh, that SSD caching drive in the Synology, um, because it actually pulls from that drive more often than not. Um, but basically that's all I'm using this F2423 for is just to serve uh, MB Media. So next in our network attached storage devices, uh, keeping with the uh, the theme of TerraMaster and, uh, and, and Kevin Smith, our next device is an F5221. I've named it Silent Bob um, and it it is just a backup server. It's what I'm using to backup my Synology device. Uh, it's a five base server. It's got about 24 terabytes of storage.
storage available to it, and it, its only job is to back up the Synology device in case something happens, I can just restore it. And that's all it does, uh, and it just kind of sits there and, and just runs silently in the background. The uh, fourth and last NAS device on the network here is actually another TerraMaster device that I've had sitting over here in storage for a while. I finally coughed up some money, bought some drives for it, and we've got uh, the device that I've called Mubi's. Uh, it's an F4423. Uh, it's got four eight terabyte drives in it. Um, I'm actually gonna make a whole dedicated video about this specific device, um, but uh, th th it's just, it's on the network. I haven't done anything with it, but it's there when I'm ready to use it. So now that we've taken a look at the NAS devices on the network, let's take a look at my cluster setup here. Now these are all running on a Zima board 832s. So these are very low powered devices. I wish they had more RAM. Uh, they've each got eight gigs, but um, I, I still wish I had more RAM just because. Uh, but basically uh, we've got uh, a couple on, on the first node on the cluster. I'm running dbtech.com and dbtech.fans. Uh, and in fact, we can pull those up right here. Uh, there's dbtech.fans, it's up and running uh, very quickly. You can see I'm accessing this on the actual URL, so I'm not accessing this locally to get speeds like this. Uh, it is, it all just runs very quickly. I'm very happy with how this thing runs. Of course, we've got dbtech.com, uh, the wiki where I've got a lot of resources for the different videos that I release. If I come over here to like Docker containers, uh, there we go. There's Vicuña, for instance. And just that quickly, all of this stuff is just up and running very, very quickly. Next, on, on the second note over here, I've got a project manager uh, called Lean Time. We've, we actually did a video about that a while back. Um, I used it very diligently for a while and then didn't. Uh, I've kind of forgotten about it. I've gotten busy and just kind of gotten into bad old habits of just trying to remember everything without using the tools that I've made available to myself. Uh, I've got file run. Uh, that actually I've got set up for uh, for my 3D printing and my laser stuff uh, on the on the benches back here. That's just where I can store files to access them later uh, when I want to to redo a, a project or whatever the case is. Of course, below that we've got AdGuard. We've all done AdGuard at some point or PyHole. Same thing, different name. Um, and then uh, below that, we've got uh, Bitwarden. That's my password manager of choice. Um, I've, I've been using it. That was one of the first things I implemented uh, throughout the house. Everybody uses, in my house uses uh, Bitwarden or Vault Warden, I guess is the more appropriate term here. I mean, then LenPaste, kind of your own little uh, code repository thing there. If we look below uh, this, you can actually see I've got a cluster backup set up right here. And that is running uh, actually in a VM on my Synology device. It's not best practice. I know I need to get a separate device. I may, I may actually set up uh, a, a backup system over on Silent Bob so that all my backups are in one location. Um, I'll figure something out. I'd love to hear from you guys what you think I should do as far as that's concerned. But uh, all of my nodes are backing up every day. Uh, and here we can see uh, kind of what's going on there. One of the other big changes that I made to my network recently was switching from a TP-Link Deco X55 mesh network setup that it worked. I, I can give it that for, and it would work fine for most for most of the population. However, um, with all of the hosting I do and all of the, the stuff that I do on my network, I wanted something a bit more robust. I had a Unify system in the past and um, it, updates terrified me. I was always scared to do an update on my Unify setup because I was, a, I was sure that something was going to break. Um, so so I, I downgraded from the Unify, I, theoretically I downgraded from the Unify to the Deco X55 and then, decided to reach out to TP-Link um, and, and, and had them put me in touch with the Omada team. And the Omada team hooked me up and, and sent me a whole new network solution. And here is the Omada controller uh, dashboard where we can kind of get an idea of my ISP load and kind of all of the stuff going on here, the clients I've got, uh, access points, switches, things like that. And if we jump over to the devices, uh, we can see that I've got a router uh, that is the ER605 version two. Uh, I've got a 10 port switch uh, that is actually both of those um, and the, the controller are all out in my living room because that's where Xfinity installed my modem and it was just easier to put everything there. Um, so all of that is out there. I've got a 24 port switch uh, back here behind me that I'm using uh, that is a managed switch. All of the devices uh, on Omada are managed so I can dedicate uh, different ports for VLANs and things like that. Um, and then of course uh, I've got uh, their wireless access point, which is just a beast. Uh, I absolutely love it. I've got multiple uh, wireless networks set up for guest and IOT and, and all kinds of stuff. So there's a video coming about this uh, network solution as well, but I wanted to give you an idea of what's kind of running my network at this point. So that's covered quite a bit, but we're not done yet. That is kind of all of the infrastructure stuff and the the, the sites that I've made publicly available, uh, mostly for uh, for the the DB Tech brand as far as websites and and 
and fan pages and things like that. Uh, so now let's kind of talk about what I host internally for my own personal private use. So here is Portainer. This is actually set up over on my Synology device, um, the one that's been up and running for the last year and a half with no issues, thankfully. Um, and here are the containers that I've got up and running. The first one we've got here is AdGuard Home Sync. Uh, basically what that does, if you haven't watched that video, is it lets me synchronize settings between two different AdGuard Home uh, instances. So uh, if I make a change to one, it will automatically transfer those settings to the other one. Uh, so I don't have to go and, and change stuff in multiple places. This container has been a lifesaver. Uh, below that, we've got Discord Bot. I could probably actually get rid of this. In fact, after having looked through some of this, there's a bunch of this I could get rid of, which I probably will at some point. But Discord Bot was mostly just so that um, I could help manage my Discord uh, a little easier. If you're not a member of the Discord, you should definitely check that out. Next, we've got Emulator JS. That's another one of those that's gonna go. Uh, I had it set up for a video. I thought I was gonna use it. I don't use it. So it's just taking up space and it can go at this point. Um, Epic Jensen uh, <laughs> is actually just a Cloudflare uh, tunnel application so that I can remotely access uh, my different containers and websites and things like that without having to expose any ports on my network. Um, so that's what that there, that's there for. Guacamole, uh, I actually use this every once in a while for remote accessing uh, you know, my, my PC in here, uh, being able to SSH into different devices, things like that. Um, and of course, anything that I've got publicly facing uh, is tightly secured through Cloudflare tunnels and, and a, a multitude of different authentication methods that have to be uh, achieved in order to gain access. So that's what's going on there. But that guacamole uh, has been a huge help for me if I'm, if I'm traveling or if I'm away from home and I need to get in and get something, I can remote into my system here and grab the files I need very, very easily with guacamole. Uh, homepage, that's another one I set up. Uh, I actually, I really, really like that that that, that dashboard, um, but I don't use dashboards as often as I, as I thought I would. Uh, I've got another one in here though I do use periodically uh, because of the way I've got it tied into the rest of my system. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, iPerf3 server. Um, Periodically, I just wanna make sure that everything's working correctly. So I've got an iPerf3 server set up so I can uh, test my network connectivity. Um, the PC that I'm actually doing everything on right now, as well as that Synology are, are 10 gig. So I can, I can do some testing that way uh, on that 10 gig network there. Uh, jacket and uh, let's see, Jacket, Jelly Sear, um, Qubit, Torrent VPN, Radar and Sonar. Um, are all, uh, and Pi VPN or PIA VPN rather here, are all of my media acquisition uh, containers. And that's all I'm gonna say about those. Uh, next, we've got MeTube. I think this is like YouTube downloader, but different. Uh, I actually like MeTube a lot better. Uh, and it's what I've been using to archive footage from the internet for quite a while now. I'd love to make a video about it, but I'm terrified that YouTube will give me another community strike on my channel and I don't wanna risk that. So, uh, if you're interested in a MeTube video, uh, let me know, I'll figure something out um, and we'll go from there. Next, we've got Organizer. Uh, this is actually one that I use uh, more regularly as far as uh, a dashboard is concerned. You know, if we come to my homepage here, we can see that I've got a couple of different video streams going on right now. Uh, Family Guy, Supernatural. Uh, below that, of course, we can see all of the different media that's being acquired, when it's being acquired. Um, if it's if it's in green, it has been acquired. If it's in blue, it is not yet available. If it's in red, which none of these are, thankfully, it means there was an issue. Um, but of course, you can come in and, you know, this is all tied into all of the different containers that are on my network for the media acquisition stuff. Um, you know, Sonar, Radar, Qubit, Torrent, uh, MB, obviously. Obviously, uh, all of those are kind of tied in together. I've got, you know, YouTube DL, but this is actually MeTube. Um, but all of these are available uh, through this tab or through the, you know, through this sidebar over here. And that's kind of why I use it is I can just jump between uh, my different things here and uh, just get access to whatever it is I want from one single place. It's why I really like Organizer. So that's why I use this one and not some of the others. Uh, let's see, uh, of course, Portainer, that's what we're in right now. Pwn Drop. if I need to share a file with somebody, I use Pwn Drop. it's just easier. Uh, in my opinion, most of the time to just do that. And that's of course set up on a domain name so that I can I can send that to people and they can access the files that I've given them, whatever. Uh, Uptime Kuma, I actually really like this one. Uh, it tells me what services are up and down. I actually had forgotten about this. When I switched my network over, I didn't update uh, Uptime Kuma. And so I had a lot of downtime being reported here. I fixed it this morning and now everything is up and running. Everything seems to be working very, very well. And here shortly, uh, this 3% uptime will hopefully jump up to 100%. 
uh, without any issues. So guys, there you go. After the last couple of years of looking at containers and Docker setups and things like that, you know, we probably looked at, at more than a hundred different containers. And these are the ones that I actually use on a regular basis. You know, whether it's for my, for my, the, the convenience of my day-to-day -day life here in the house or the stuff that I've got hosted so that, uh, so that you guys can have access to additional resources for the different videos that I release. This is what I use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, across my network. So hopefully you found the video interesting. Uh, if you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Maybe leave a comment down below letting me know what some of your more favorite day-to-day uh, -day use containers and setups are. I'd love to know what you guys are using. Maybe I'm missing something that would make my life even easier. Uh, so yeah, if you've got any ideas of something I should check out, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, but I think with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.